In this video, we're going to be going over seismic criteria and design. And of course, this is from ASCE 716. The criteria is found in chapter 11 whereas design is found in chapter 12. So let's go ahead and get started by looking at the criteria. So in order for you to do a seismic analysis in design for a seismic situation, you'll need to have a few parameters. So for design, you need to know your SDS value, your SD1 value, and your seismic design category. So your SDS and your SD1, these are your design spectral acceleration parameters. So let's go ahead and look at those in a little bit more depth. So if we look at SDS, that is going to be found using equation 11.4-3. And in that equation, you will need to know your SMS value, which is equation 11.4-1. And your SMS equation is made up of your FA value and your SS value. Now your SS value comes from figure 22-1 and your FA value comes from table 11.4-1. In order to find your FA value, you're going to use the site class, which is given in a soils report from the geotechnical engineer. If you don't have a soils report, then you can just default to site class D. And of course, in that table, you're going to uh, use it to interpolate. To calculate your FA. SD1 goes through a similar process. So that's going to be equation 11.4-4, and you'll need SM1, which is equation 
four dash two. And that's made up of FV and S1. S1, you pull from figure 22 dash 2. And FV will be a similar procedure as your FA. It's going to come from table 11.4 dash 2. Again, you're going to use your site class and you'll interpolate. to calculate FV. Then once you have your SDS and SD1, you can use those to find your seismic design category. which is section 11.6. But more importantly, you're going to use tables 11.6-1 and 11.6-2 to get a seismic design category, a through D and you're going to use the greater letter so this is least to greatest so whichever of these tables use the greater design category. So if one of the tables gives you a design category C and the other gives you D, then you're gonna choose D as your seismic design category. And then one last thing that's really important to remember is to read the paragraphs above the tables. It's really easy to forget about those and there's some stipulations in those paragraphs that may override the design category that the tables give you. So just beware of that. So along with the criteria, there's this thing called the design response spectrum. And this is just a spectrum that has been developed um, over the years by studying earthquakes. And it helps us to um, better design for earthquakes. So this spectrum can be found in section 11.4.6 and figure 11.4-1 gives you a visual of what that spectrum actually looks like. But you're going to use the equations from this section to help you to develop a response spectrum.
All right, and then all of that will be used in your seismic design. So the most important things to know um, about seismic design are gonna be about base shear. And then the vertical distribution of forces at each story of structure. So this is what's gonna actually give us our loads that we're gonna design for. So if we have some building give it some floors and there's some earthquake over here and those waves are propagated out to this building and this building is then going to shake now this total force that it feels here at the bottom that's going to be its base shear and what we can do when we're designing is we can split this base shear up into different components and apply them at each story. So that way we know what to design each story for. This is gonna be F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. And of course, your sum of your story forces has to equal your base shear. All right, so we're just gonna go through how to calculate your base shear and how to calculate these individual forces that you're gonna apply at each story when you're designing your structure. So for base shear, We're going to use equation 12.8-1, and that says that your base shear equals the seismic coefficient times the weight of your structure. So this here is going to be the total weight of structure. So you take all your dead loads, you add them up, and that's the total weight of your structure. This here is your seismic coefficient. And that will be calculated using equation 12.8-2. And there are some limits on this. So CS max, the max that CS can be, you're going to get from equation 12.8-3 or 12.8-4, depending on what the period of your structure is. And then there's also a minimum that CS has to be and you're gonna use equation 12.8-5 or 12.8-6. Again, depending on the period of your structure is gonna determine which of those equations that you use. All right, and it's as simple as that. You just take your seismic coefficient that you calculate by doing all of this, you multiply it by a total weight, and then that's your base shear. Then once you have your base shear, you can go ahead and work to find those individual forces, so your vertical distribution of forces. And that is all found in section 12.8.3. And you're going to use equation 12.8-11, which says that your F 
x is going to equal c v x times your base shear. Now, one thing to note, x in this case is always going to be uh, the story that you're looking at. So f1 would be story 1, f2 would be story 2, f3 would be story 3, so on. All right, and then of course V is going to be your base shear. And your CVX, so your CV for floor X is going to be this equation right here. And this here is equation 12.8-12. And just to define these terms really fast, Wx or Wi is the weight of story x or i, hx or hi is the height from base to story x or I, and that's really important. This is the height from the base. So it's not the height of the individual story. It's from that base all the way up to that story. So you're going to get progressively larger as you move up stories. And then finally, that K value is uh, given below. this equation and it's just related to the period of your structure and so to find the period of your structure you can use equation 12.8.7 and that's pretty much it as far as it goes for seismic cr criteria and design uh, we have full examples of workout problems of this in our written examples, which is found just above this video. You can find those. If you have a specific question about homework that you're working on or you're just stuck, you can go ahead and visit our homework help page. And we'll be able to get you a, your specific question, question answered there. If you're just having trouble grasping this whole concept and you just need someone to walk you through it, go ahead and visit our tutoring page. And I'll be able to sit down with you and kind of explain this a little bit more in detail and maybe get a better idea of what you're struggling with. As always, feel free to reach out. Send us an email and we'll get back to you. Taylor's Tutoring, et cetera, gmail.com. Or you can use the chat function on this web page.